Hello everyone, my name is Chris. Uh, I'm a data infrastructure lead for data analytics platform at ING. I had some episodes in high frequency trading, also quite some fun migrating the data infrastructure part of Spotify to the cloud uh, was part uh, of my career. Uh, coming from ING, large financial institution, multinational, you can understand there will be some challenges on the, on the journey of building something that is connected with data. Uh, you can also um, think that yeah, data is are in silos, closed in silos, how to leverage all this data stored everywhere. That's uh, a challenge in that kind of a company. We heard today a lot about embracing open source, uh, embracing the power of community, and there are also some talks about data platforms. How about I uh, combine all those talks together and uh, maybe share you a bit our journey on, at ING, how we get to that point. So the ultimate goal is to become a data-driven company. So the data that really leverages all the data inside the organization that can build products based on data, that basically it's the goal. But how to put that in numbers? So if you have that ambitious goal, uh, if you build, build a product, what does it mean really? What do you want to achieve? In our terms, when we started uh, the vision of data analytics platform, we wanted to have 50% of all our employees making use of the data. It doesn't mean that everyone, that 50% of ING employees would now become a data scientist, because that's impossible. But if they start using the outcomes of uh, what the data analytics platform provides, the reports, uh, different products that are based on the outcome of, uh, of the computation done on the platform, that's going to be a success. And that's the, the high level goal, the North Star metric that we have on our platform. But uh, what does it take to get people on the platform? Yeah, That's the human aspect, the human centricity that we added to, to that point. The call, we, uh, we claim that well, the, the term that we have here democratized, but uh, we have the different meaning to that one. Uh, we wanted to make data, we, need to make, we want to make the analytics accessible to everyone within the company. But it doesn't really mean that the data should be open to everyone. We also have some regulatory means, we have some internal regulations. It doesn't mean that yeah, data should be available to everyone at all costs or anytime they want. Security is a major concern yeah, the, in our financial industry. So we need to make sure that when uh, and choosing the data analytics platform that, uh, that people that are sharing, or data owners that are sharing the data with that platform, they're also making sure that data is being then securely used, used by our users on the platform. You need to also uh, bring the necessary tools to that platform that so users can uh, basically leverage the, the, the access to the data that they have. And m most of all, yeah, you also need to have the computational power to be able to tackle the amount of data that you start to store on that platform. The three layers that we uh, created in our vision starts with data democratization, goes with analytics democratization and machine learning democratization. The single layer, one cannot uh, be used within the foundation layer being done before. Data democratization, access to all the data sets stored within the company. As I mentioned before, not open to everyone. It needs to pass some, uh, go, some checks before the data can be used, can be shared with anyone. Analytics democratization, when you can start, build your models, share the data, share the, share the dashboard with the, the users. Also, there's the place where the common taxonomy, the common dictionary, we call it ING Esperanto, is being then leveraged here. So we can have a common understanding between data sources coming from different regions, different banks that, uh, across the Europe. But then in that place, we combine all this terminology. So everyone accessing the data, I don't know, from the Netherlands, data from Turkey, they know what kind of data they're talking about. And finally, the machine learning democratization, so cherry on the cake. So basically, when, when all these things are then delivered, you can start building and leveraging machine learning because you need to trust the data, you need to understand the data. Only then you can start applying some machine learning rules that can make use of the data in other products. Focusing on data democratization, uh, we leverage the self-service aspect here. So definitely what we want to, if you want to scale to the 50% of your organization that, what, that's going to be using the, the analytics platform, you need to make sure that the users are able to do as much as they can on their own. So this is the key factor here, the key factor for success. We started with centralized, centralized team for data ingestion. We call it the data liberation squad. This is how we bring the data to our platform from different data lakes. We have the federated data lakes initiatives at ING, but we also can bring the data from system of records Preferably the data lake route is something that we should be embracing here. But with that framework, the generic ingestion framework that we prepared, users 
in the future, that's what we envision, they would be able to bring the data on their platform on their own. They could free, they could democratize their own data, they could become a da data owners on their, on their own and bring the data in the same way how we did it in the past with, the, with this data ingestion framework. What does it mean? What is being done in that framework? We basically uh, apply the, uh, checking the proper schema and applying the schema, applying those taxonomy rules, the common dictionary. We also then checking the, we uh, making sure the data lineage is, uh, is embedded in that framework. The integrity is there. We also make sure the data quality uh, metrics are being delivered and exposed to the users. So they know they can trust the data. They know where the data was coming from. So they can use this data in their report and their system and their product. Uh, and the discovery part, that's something I'm going to mention also later on, how it's it going to be easy to find this data. Because if there are new users coming uh, to ING, maybe new employees, and they have some new uh, genuine idea that they would like to use some kind of a data, how they can find the data in your organization. And this is something that also in this part, we should be able to answer those questions. Some open source technology that we are using under the hood, one of it, some of them like Roku is probably unknown to you. We open source that uh, the technology that creates an uh, authorization layer to our storage. Analytics democratization. And this is basically how we, uh, what do we see that 80% of the analytics is being done. So not really that machine learning, machine learning maybe comes to like 20% or even less, the very powerful uh, outcome, so the, the place where the analytics is being done. But 80% is exactly here. When you try to you know, do data cleansing, when you do sorting, emerging, then you prepare the visualization. This is exactly the place that it is happening. You have some BI-like uh, tools, like Apache Superset, if you come from the open source world, you can uh, attach Tableau, Power BI, but you can do it in this layer. The data science in a box is our concept of bringing machine learning tools and frameworks to, uh, to, for data scientists. So they can basically uh, specify the environment, all the dependencies they need to work, and then they just uh, start on, the cl on our cluster, compute cluster and get access to the data. Finally, machine learning democratization, you building the machine learning pipelines, you reuse the pipeline definition that we have. And then from that place, when you train that model, when you store that model in the model registry, you can then bring that model into production. So we have a framework that helps you to bring that model into execution. In exploration, you are free to test your different hypotheses. You are free to mingle with the data. But then from that place, when you have the definition of your model, you can then put that model into production. Okay, three different layers, but conceptually, what we want to achieve, the, the human factor, what, how, how it make it easy for this 50% of, uh, of employees to get access to the, to the platform? Well, the simple answer is a toolbar, a search bar. Basically, it's a Google answer to the, to the word, what I want to do today. And here, the, the, the search box, uh, basically, you start with searching your data. We see that the, the, the journey starts when you, when you start looking for the data set that you want to use in your organization. So this is the single powerful way of accessing data in your company that should be available to our users. And this is how we see it. But there are different uh, drivers, obviously, to the platform. So not only the search, but that it's uh, only those layers. Containerization allows us to scale out. The, uh, Liz mentioned about the commodity in, our, in the keynote. And so we embrace containerization as a way uh, to, to commoditize the infrastructure, to make sure everything is packaged in a single, uh, single de de deployment artifact and then being, being then used on the platform. Open source, as it's called, open for developers, that uh, they speed this, speed this up, making things uh, cloud native, in the sense that yeah, we envision this platform should be extended into the cloud. This is actually something that we are doing right now. Started with uh, on-premise technology, but thinking of how to uh, extend this platform into the cloud. Should be integrated, data lineage end to end. So, as I mentioned before, the data needs to uh, data needs to be guaranteed. Users need to trust that data. So, definitely, this is the key drivers that we see uh, as a successful uh, that that driver to success for the platform. Our humble beginnings, our humble roots, but how it's possible in your organization or in our organization that it could happen that this product like this could emerge. The product was started in a tribe that thrive on diversity. So we are, uh, we are a product tribe that consists of 27 nationalities that are spread across four countries, nine product squad. 
So in that, that diversity of different ideas, different way of thinking, for example, I'm coming from Poland, I have quite a, a presence in Romania, uh, here in London, in, obviously in Amsterdam. So that combination of different di diversity, different mindset helps us to build, to build those different products. Conceptually, we are a product tribe. So not only the data analytics platform that, that started in that tribe was uh, in the first, it was only started uh, uh, building, uh, supporting products for host and banking part of ING. Now it's a global platform, but you also have different products that starts here. So this product design thinking is really important here. On the journey, so maybe a little bit uh, brief of history, how it started uh, with that. So that concept was started maybe 2018. We had kind of a platform before uh, based on Hadoop technology, but conceptually we started to think of something bigger or something uh, more uh, towards the future in 2018. And then we started, we built, uh, assembled a small team that built an MVP. And just one hour later, uh, one year later, we did a rollout for 15 countries and we started with 500 users constantly improving our product, adding new features. And right now we are with 1,700 1, users across 1,700, uh, 17 countries and 240 products currently we support in the in ING. So there are different products of the different state of their maturity, mostly in exploration, they are testing uh, their ideas. Sometimes they fail, um, but this is that inevitable world of uh, trying things out uh, in today's world. Our users, so how it starts, how, how the product of, uh, how to build the pro how we build the products uh, at ING, at, at our tribe. It starts with the design thinking. So this is something that I'll try to, to uh, the human centricity part of that platform that I would like to uh, share here. It starts with empathizing with the users. So we, you step outside your biases, you, with the help of the designer, you go, you talk to your users, you try to uh, get an idea of how they work, uh, what are the problems, what are the challenges that they have. With all those uh, experience combined, then we gather as a team, then we really define the problem, what we really want to solve in this in the, with this particular product. With this, uh, after that phase, we, we've defined the problem, then we can start generating ideas. And this is something, this is the place where we like uh, use, your, use your imagination. How would you solve that problem? Uh, is there any better idea? Maybe there's some bad idea, maybe some uh, different example from the market. When this, when do, when this uh, part is done, then you have the, the, the phase of prototyping. And this is something that we are building together with our team. We're doing some prototypes, evaluating ourselves, but then the st we start the phase of testing. When we test, some, we've did, we've test those prototypes with the users, with the pilot users or with the bigger group of users, getting the feedback and the circle goes on with the new features. Everything we build, we follow, we follow the same principle. We've got designers, uh, user researchers that are helping us, uh, helping the engineers to build the right product to answer the right needs. So most of the time we spend or on getting, do we tackle the right problem? Are we going to not to spend too much time or uh, chasing goals or to something that is not going to be used then within the company. So that's the way how we iterate. Different personas that we identified on the plat platform. So you have different types of users that uh, will be using your, your platform. This is something that we identified in our case, might be different in, in your companies. There are uh, using different layers on that platform. So for example, the leadership, they're also make, only making use of the dashboard being created in the analytics democratization, on the analytics democratization phase. But data scientists, they obviously need access to the latest tools, latest libraries. They need those uh, Python notebooks with the dependencies that are built on their own or they bring from the internet. We also need to make sure that we can deliver the, the, those products to them, but making it in a secure way. Human-centered city, once again. This is something that uh, we believe is key to our success. Uh, we did do this user research. We do comprehensive user support. We have our Slack group that we, cons that we, uh, that we, get, that we give the support to our users, something that they, that, uh, they really embrace uh, on that journey with uh, using our analytics platform. That's something that I was a little bit afraid of. <coughs> Does it scale? Does it scale beyond uh, 1,000 users? But then out of the sudden, I realized that I stopped uh, supporting for, for our users because the users support themselves. 
So the first, uh, the first users, the, the key enablers, they start using the, future, the feature, they know how to use it, they help others. Uh, out of this time, we built an internal community, uh, and uh, yeah, that's something maybe not a surprise for you, but uh, that really helped, yeah? That really tremendously helped to, to give the support to, uh, to our users, to, to welcome them, to uh, help them to, with the first steps on the platform. This is also the place where we get the feedback and get some ideas for new features. So when we see that sometimes the problems are reoccurring, then yeah, basically you can tackle it, or maybe you have some new ideas how you can help uh, and you, you can identify potential areas when then you can do, again, a research, you can start empathize with the users, you can start uh, thinking with the users and, and build uh, new, 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 pro new features on the platform. Testing, refinement, everything done with the users. Some of the testimonials that we always like to, to share with, uh, with our key stakeholders within the company, that people like uh, sometimes being asked, what would you do if the, if the app stops existing? Yeah, so they wouldn't be able to work. Uh, uh, this is one of the uh, key testimonials from them. Obviously, there's a technology part uh, in that stack that uh, yeah, you cannot forget. The Lots of open source tools here on the, on the picture. But uh, parts of it, uh, so you can take the platform uh, yeah, from a vendor, you, but you can build it yourself. So this is what we decided to do in that case. You can cherry pick the components that you like, that you, uh, because if you embrace the containerization, if you have those uh, concepts in mind that you can bring any tool on the platform as long as it's containerized, as it supports uh, containers, uh, distribute, uh, containers uh, framework like Kubernetes, then you can move with this platform anywhere. That's the, that's the beauty of, of that stack, that you can replace the storage layer. Yeah, let's say you want to go with Google, then you can replace that object storage that's uh, used S3 API with GCS API. You can go to AWS, you can go to Azure. So this, pla this, pla this, story, this layer is completely replaceable. The same with compute. You can have your Spark cluster on Kubernetes, you can have your Presto clusters on Kubernetes, but uh, why, why don't you want to use BigQuery or something from Azure or AWS Athena? That's uh, up to you. One thing that is key in our opinion is the front-end layer. So this is the user journey that we identified, that we prepared for the users, that we want to keep and maintain regardless where our infra whether our infrastructure is in the cloud or on-premise. So the layer when you, when you uh, that the users are familiar with already, that's something that we wouldn't like to change. And the logo, uh, Amundsen, they may not realize, is something I mentioned before. It's our data discovery portal. This is the search bar when you, when you search for data. It looks through the whole metadata of our data, and then it helps to users to find relevant information. It helps you to find who are the key users of that data, so that can help you to understand it better, maybe. That, uh, that give you a lot of insight into the data set that we already have. And this is something that uh, yeah, that's emerged in the different tech-oriented companies. Spotify has its uh, lexicon. Other companies have different uh, data discovery tools. But this one is open source. Uh, we contribute to that project. So that's something that also I encourage you to check. More diving into the details, maybe the user journey here. Everything is uh, centered around uh, CI/CD. You've got the code repository, obviously. So the definition of all of our code is in a code repository. You package everything in a container. This is the environment builder. So if you specify your environment that I would like this Python dependency, Java of this version, this is then being containerized and shipped on the platform. And it coexists with different tool sets on our platform. Everything, as I mentioned, containers gets access to the object storage, uh, to the storage la layer and uh, from the, in that space we operate. And the whole layer to the, to the right, the containers platform can be also shifted anywhere. Every component is basically replaceable. We welcome other components. That's something that we constantly have in mind, uh, checking if there are any better tool that we can bring on the, on the platform uh, as long as it meets our criteria being containers because we are a small team, for example, the infrastructure team of DAP is a team of five that's, uh, that supports the whole machinery. So that's why we want to make this use the commodity here. And with that one, that will be all, but I will open to any questions. Yeah, go ahead. When you, on one of the earlier slides, you talked about product pods, and, or product and squads and platform squads. Mm -hmm. What were the, which squad and which parts of the solution? 
Uh, okay, in about the product spot here. Sure, you can think always about the layers, yes? Yeah? So you have the infrastructure layer, they have the layer of the platform. And then, for example, Domino is one of the, one of the products that uh, was also created within the trap, but then leverage the apps, leverage the analytics done within the, the analytics platform for their own product. So they, they obviously they started building the, their own analysis, they build their own models that then are feeding their product. So then Domino is one of these 240 products that we have on, on the platform, basically. So but it's also like dog fooding. So also eat our own, our own food or so whatever we prepared. Uh, for example, the dashboards that are tracking the, the user's activity on the platform, uh, the adoption rate, is also built within uh, with the same platform. So that's why we're also checking, you know, if sometimes, and, and also found myself, yeah, this is maybe suboptimal. We have to do it better because I'm using the platform myself, yeah, for my own purposes. So that's also something that I encourage you to do, yeah? So dog fooding, try to use your own tools, whatever you build, uh, for your own purposes, and then you'll see where you're missing something. <laughs> There's no other, so maybe you can shoot. Um, so the first, when you talk about democratization of data and analytics, um, one outcome could be that you get a lot of mess because everybody's just diving in and doing whatever they want. Um, and that is fine. That is fine because if you're, if you're in exploration, if you are, uh, you know, ch checking your ideas, trying your new ideas, it is still fine to, to produce a um, messy result. The only point is that from, from, this, uh, uh, from, from this point, you won't be able to move this into production, into execution environment. As I mentioned, that you get the lineage up to the point that we guarantee uh, the health of this data set. So this generic ingestion framework brings you the data from system of records through the data lake to this, to this part. And from that part, you can only put in the execution. If you start mingle with the data, uh, then you're doing this in your own product environment. You've got your own database when you can create your own, bring your own data, you can uh, add extra information over there. But with that information, you won't be able to put it to the execution. Yeah? So this, yeah, they so are still in exploration the phase. Control point is kind of that something moves into being productive. Exactly, yeah, to guarantee lineage, to guarantee integrity, then you just need to define, you know, what's gonna be the source of your data in the production, in the, pr in the production model, yeah? So you then define your model, bring it to production, pinpoint, you know, the data sets, the input data sets, and then you, that's how we guarantee integrity. So conceptually, like exploration, execution, this is how we divided it. It doesn't have to be, it, it still can be done on a single platform. It's just conceptually we have this concept of the golden data set that cannot be touched, cannot be modified because we need to guarantee the integrity. Okay, final one is, um, as you build out this productized data platform, where you're at the same time kind of decommissioning, killing legacy or older systems, or did you build this up completely as a new thing on the side? Uh, we had a previously Hadoop cluster before, like purely Hadoop cluster that, uh, that this platform replaces. Obviously, it's a bigger concept. Uh, we are, yeah, this like step is uh, put aside. Yeah. Uh, definitely, we uh, killed some other initiatives, uh, small in analytics initiatives in the company, but uh, we just still believe we would like to encourage users to, like, to, to onboard on that platform. This has happened like organically, that they're choosing that because we have it starts with all with data. If you have all the data of the company prepared in a format that is ready for analytics, if you have the, the power of computation in one place, everyone will start using it. And as long as you also have allowed them to, to, to use the tools that they really want, the open source tools, uh, that, that's something. Is it more people are able to manage uh, ingested into the both, yes, so we support both, but uh, the standard way is that is schema on right, yeah, that we support, the, we put the data into the tables and then the people read them from the tables, from the tabular format, that's most of the thing. But uh, you, in particular use cases, people can get access to raw data. For example, if they, uh, if there's some, for example, doubt that we parse the SEPA or SWIFT uh, formats incorrectly, and in particular use cases, then we allow access to raw data set. So they can apply their own schema. People could just keep adding data, 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 right, forever. 
So the, there are different drivers to that one. So for the storage, definitely we keep an eye on it. It's, uh, well, we embraced, uh, well, we started with some vision on how big the cluster should be for a couple of years and uh, we are still good, but uh, obviously reaching the capacity, we have to still keep this in mind and increase the, the, the capacity part of that one. And that's for the storage is easy because you calculate how much other pr different projects use the storage and then you, you can divide the cost. Uh, for the computation, we have a simple trick because it's exploration. Uh, we share the resources uh, evenly among the users. So if the cluster is idle and your job comes to the cluster, then basically you can get the whole the part of the whole cluster. If the second party comes in, then you divide the cluster 50-50. So you've got uh, basically then share the cluster resources. For the cloud, that's a different story because that's uh, something that we still have in mind uh, uh, how to uh, tackle the cost properly to, to make sure that uh, some model is not go really going crazy. <laughs> so then we, would, we should really put some quotas here. In terms of bringing the data from system of record, how are you going to manage duplication or not having duplication on your platforms used by different use cases? Uh, so there's always the golden the golden data sets are there. So uh, most of the data originates from the data lakes of ING. So it takes the data from the from the data lakes. So it's already there. And on the platform, the we only have single version of the single data source on the platform available. But this one is read only. So the projects can get read only access to the data set. They can create subsequent you know, data set based on that one, but they cannot modify the existing one. And then basically when they go into execution, then pinpoint that I want to, the, to have the, the model to use the data from data source one. Everyone is using the data source one for the, for the models. So that we guarantee there's no duplication. There's only a single version of two. Okay, if there's no further question, I guess mm. that will be it. Thank you.